Hello everyone, welcome to Ignite, where we connect, grow, and inspire. As you prepare to listen to the sermon today, I pray that you are blessed. Let's get started. So um, today we'll be profiling a man um, just like Auntie Dooney. I'll, when I read it as I was younger, I was like, oh wow, how can you do that? How can you do that? And then one day, before this series, I knew about this series, I was sitting down and had to come up with something for my connect group. And then God gave me this man to look at. And I was like, really? It couldn't be Daniel, David. It had to be him. And I really understood from a point where it's so easy to read the Bible and to judge somebody. But what God wants us to know is to do is not to judge, but to take from them what will help us to grow. So when we see these people in the scripture, they're human beings like you and I, and yes, they might have made mistakes, but in it is not for us to judge their mistake, but for us to receive, okay, he did this. How can I ensure I don't make this mistake? How can I ensure that I do better? So today in the continuation of heroes, my first thing to come to you is, what is the definition of a hero? Um, so I'm a Marvel DC fan. I love my Marvel DC. I love the Avengers. Um, I watch it and I'm like, wow, I wish I could have this superpower and that. And then after starting this Heroes Academy, I realized that what we're seeing as so huge and big in these superheroes, God has given it to us already. We have it already. It might not be in the way that is glorified in the world, but God has given us the ability to save, the ability to be role models, the ability to do more than we think. So some of us think we're not heroes because I don't have the ability to fly. But you have the ability to do, to do much more than that because God has made you and composed you in a way where you're supposed to go out into the world and make an effective change. So if you're sitting here today and thinking, I can't gain anything from this Heroes Academy, the first thing I wanna tell you is that God is telling you you're a hero. God is telling you that there's something more that you can give. Now we're using these people of God in the scripture to learn from them, but ultimately, once you make that decision that I'm a hero, you've already started the way, the journey. You've already made given yourself and God has given you an assignment for you to fulfill, to go and affect the world, to go and make a change. So in, when I went to see the definition of a hero, it says a person who is admired, idolized for courage, outstanding um, achievements or noble qualities. And that should be all of us. All of us should aim to be that person. Whether you can, you know, like I said, Marvel, DC, you can fly or you're the Hulk. It doesn't matter. God has said that we have those abilities. So we're supposed to be the definition of a hero. So this academy is also for us to say and analyze ourselves. How do I fit in this role? Am I? Can I learn from this person? Am I in this situation? What can I take from it? And I pray that the Lord will all minister to us in Jesus' name. So... Um, so the man of the, I guess the hour is Samson. Um, like I said, not one of the, my top 10 people, but so much, you can learn so much from him. So if we turn our Bibles to Judges 13, please. Okay. I'm gonna just give you the, um, the story of Samson briefly, just for those that don't know it. I'm not going to assume we all know who he is. He was a man who was born to deliver the Israelites from the Philistines. So we see in Judges um, 13 verse 1 that there is the enemy, which is the Philistines. And then God allows an angel to come to the mother of Samson to tell her, okay, you're going to have a baby and he's going to be a Nazarite. And then we'll see from um, then on that he grows up and he's gifted in delivering the children of Israel by delivering them from the Philistines. But he makes some errors along the way, some mistakes, which cost him his hair and his eyes. And at the end of it, he's left in a situation in the last bit of um, Judges 16, where he makes a prayer to God and says, God, help me to fulfill what I was supposed to do and destroy the Philistines. So all those people that were there where he was, he ended up killing them. Um, that was his assignment. So the first thing we can learn from him is that Samson's, what you can learn from Samson is, from a hero is, you need to know your identity. 
Identity is key. The Bible says in Judges 13, 7, if we turn to that, it says, but he said, behold, you shall conceive and give birth to a son, and now you, sh he, you shall not drink wine or any other intoxicating drink, nor eat anything unclean, for the boy shall be a Nazarite to God from birth to the day of his death. So for those of us that don't know what a Nazarite is, they're people that make a vow that they are going to be consecrated for God. They cannot drink of alcohol. They cannot be found eating anything that is defiled. They have to live a life that is basically set apart. And they are from the Israelites. So there's like a, a set of people from the Israelites who have said to themselves and made a vow, or like in this case, God has ordained to be people set apart. And that was Samson's identity. And that's key. But what I learned from this is knowing your identity and accepting your identity are two different things. Many of us, we know our identity, we're Christians, we know that. But to accept in it and walk in it is two different things. And we see from um, Samson in his story that there were many times where he did things that were against who he was. He ended up drinking alcohol. He ended up um, eating from the carcass of a lion and ended up marrying women from the people he were, who he was supposed to defeat, which are the Philistines. So the first thing that we must know is, I have an identity in Christ, I know my identity in Christ, I must accept it and walk in it. Because one, like I said, one thing is to know your identity, it's another thing to accept it and walk in it. Because one thing that I learned while I was trying to prepare for this is, God has given us an identity and an assignment. So in order for me to fulfill my assignment and in, to, in, in an effective way, I must know my identity. If I don't know and accept that identity, there will be things that will happen along the way where situations that will come up and now be questioning who I am. But if I know who I am, I can stand up and say, this is who I am to any situation or any circumstance, even if it's a person. I'll be able to say, I'm a Christian. I'll be able to say I'm born again. So Samson found himself in situations where he ended up drinking. If he had accepted that he was a Nazarite, of course he knew it because his parents told him. Of course he knew it because no razor was placed on his head. But he's still indulged in the things that he shouldn't have done. Then the second thing I want us to understand about Samson and that we should know for ourselves is to know your enemy. Many of us, um, we can say our enemy is this, our enemy is that, is that. So for Samson, his enemy that, we, that is written clearly and plainly that we can see is the Philistines. Those, those were the people he was supposed to deliver the Israelites from. But what I saw and what I believe God revealed to me is the enemy within. This is something that maybe some of us don't acknowledge, but there is the enemy within our weaknesses. The things that we do that can actually contend against the assignment or your identity. So if we turn to Romans seven fourteen, please. So the trouble is not with the law, for it is spiritual and good. The trouble is with me, for I am all too human, a slave to sin. So that is um, something that is the enemy within, sin. Or anything that is our weakness that God has maybe revealed to you, but you keep keeping it. And instead of you trying to find out, okay, how do I now help myself in this situation. And I know it can be difficult. So I'm talking to myself here. I'm not just pointing it and saying, you, 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 because we all find ourselves in this situation. The enemy within is something that affected Samson to the point where he had his hair cut off and his eyes taken out. So the Bible says that some Samson went out to marry the daughter of a Philistine. These are the people he was supposed to def the people he was supposed to eradicate. He went and found his eyes to look at a woman in the camp of the enemy, which tells me he had um, lust for women. 
And that's an example of the enemy within. Some of us, the enemy within could represent pride. Some of it, it could represent um, the love of money. But these are the things that as heroes, we need to learn how to, as we would say in England, nip it in the bud. Find out how to get to the root of that thing and now learn how to say to yourself, okay, I'm not allowing this thing to take control of me. So let's go to Solomon 2.15, please. Whilst we're waiting for that scripture to come up. Um, the enemy within can be, yes, perfect. It says, take us the foxes, the little, little foxes that spoil the vines, for our vines have tender grapes. So the reason why the Bible wants us to, and the reason why we should make it paramount that we look at the enemy within is because it ends up spoiling whatever you have for your harvest. And this can be found with Samson. Um, as I told you in the story, Samson was a man who was supposed to deliver his people from the Philistines. And in, in that, because of the distractions of life, because of his lust for women, instead of all that energy coming to strategize with God on how to defeat the Philistines, he was found with a prostitute whose name was Delilah. He was found in places he's not supposed to be. So the enemy within can actually take you out of where you're supposed to be and put you in a situation where you're not supposed to be. So you lose focus on the assignment. Because like I said, his assignment was to deliver the Israelites. But instead of him having his focus on that, his focus was now on women. So it is important for us, all of us, that... Like I said, when we know there's a situation where there's something inside of us that is working against your identity or your assignment for you to go before God and ask God to help you. Because it's not a thing where you say to yourself, okay, I'm working on it, you can leave it. The Bible says the little, little foxy spoil the vine. It might not be huge enough right now in your eyes for you to say, okay, um, you know, it's taking this for me, it's taking that for me. But once those little, little foxes spoil the vine, something that was supposed to be a huge harvest becomes minimal. And I know sometimes we're waiting for that wolf or we're waiting for that thing to grab um, huge things from us and then that's when we want to pray. But those little, little things, before the fox now becomes bigger, before it eats more and more, it is better for us to say to ourselves, okay, I need to find out how I can overcome this thing. Because before Samson went to the point where he went to Delilah, he had married a woman who was the daughter of a Philistine. That woman was taken from him. The woman was taken from him. And that was his like, get out of clause, you know, okay, let me come back and recalculate. But instead he found his eyes to where Delilah was, a prostitute who later on now became the person who implemented the plan to take not only his hair, but his eyes. Are we all still here? Okay. So the third thing that we must know as a hero is instruction. Instruction is key. Um, instruction can come from any place and it can come from any person as long as we know it's from God. We should take that instruction. The instruction for Samson was to not cut his hair, to not be found um, taking alcohol, and the instruction was not to be eating anything from any defiled animal. That was his instruction. Um, even though the Bible does not say that uh, clearly that Samson was there and the angel appeared to him, his parents were told what he should do and who he was. And I believe that information was passed on to him because he walked in a way where his hair was still long and he still had the strength of God. The Bible says that he was stirred up with the Holy Spirit. So that let us know that, yes, he got that instruction. But following through with that instruction is the key because 
First of all, I believe when the angel of God, which comes in Revelations 3, you can read that, I mean, not Revelations, Judges um, 13, 3, which you can read on your own, is that the angel comes to his mother, which is the revelation. That is when you get information from an unseemly, mysterious way. So his mother got the revelation. And from the revelation came the instruction. And then from the instruction comes direction. The direction was for him to not cut his hair. Like I said, and I keep saying this because sometimes God will tell you as a person some instructions. And we take it, okay, for the first month, that's the instruction. And we walk by it. And then the second month, it's like we don't want to listen to that. But an instruction from God is so key because it is going to lead to direction. So, like I said, he was not allowed to cut his hair. He was not allowed to be with anything that was defiled. So, in that same speed of instruction, there's also counsel, which is another way of getting some sort of instruction, but it's, it's an advice. So, Samson's parents advised him. They advised him when his first wife, when he got his first wife, could you not find anybody from your family? Could you not find anybody from your tribe? They were trying to counsel him because they were the ones that God gave the revelation to that he was a Nazarite. I don't know how many of us have been given um, some sort of counsel by our parents or any one of us have been counseled by the man of God or you've received counsel even from your friends that that counsel is very important. Who now counsels you? Because as someone who says you're gonna walk and be an example to others, whatever you're listening to is of importance. And how you now receive that thing and walk with that thing. He received counsel from his parents and instead of following that counsel, he did not. He now went and took someone and now fraternized with another Philistine, which was Delilah. So he didn't take heed to it. That's another error that Samson made. Instead of him now adhering to the fact that his parents were equipped with the knowledge to help him with his journey, he decided to go his own way. He decided to take a turn that was going to lead to his peril. And yes, at the end of it, I know that at the end of it, we can see that he killed more Philistines than he did in his life. But... How many of us want that situation? I'm sure none of us. None of you want to do more and the consequence be death and then you do more. You want to do throughout your life. You want to leave a legacy throughout your life. Samson, in effect, cut short how many, how productive he could have been in his lifetime. It was whilst being captured by the Philistines, he remembered, oh, and then he was able to kill the Philistines. And it all came from, like I said, number one, the identity, number two, the enemy within, and then number three, instruction and counsel. Because he went, it's as if his parents had seen, you have a lust for women, and asked him the question, why would you go and find a woman in the house of the Philistines and not find a woman in the house of our people? And in effect, it was him, his eyes that allured him to Delilah. The Bible does not record that Delilah went to him. It's actually him, he, that went to her. And sometimes that's what happens when we do not listen to counsel. The enemy doesn't have to come and say, oh, I'm going to get sister A or brother B. It's purely because you didn't listen to that counsel and you refuse to listen that you can find yourself in a position whereby the enemy is there and you walked into it. And that's what happened to Samson because like I said, Delilah had no, she didn't go and say, oh, I'm gonna get Samson. No, she was in her place. She was in her place. He wasn't in his place. And that's what caused the inevitable thing of him being in Deli with Delilah. And then another thing that we can see from this is Know your weapon, your tool, or your gift. As a hero, it is very important. If you don't know what you have, then you're not able to affect what you have. If you don't know, if you don't cultivate the gift, you're not able to. Samson, in the Bible, we can see he was able to kill some Philistines with the jawbone of a donkey. That was his gift. 
he was able, not the fact that he used a jawbone, but the fact that he had that much strength that so many men could come to him and one man was able to defeat them. That was his gift. And that's a good thing that we can see of Samson. Samson was able to use his gift, but this is where the but is. It's with the Holy Spirit. It was not him by himself, it's with the Holy Spirit. The Bible says when the Holy Spirit came upon him is when he was able to use that gift, which tells us as heroes, as people who are trying to be heroes for God, that we must, even though we may have a gift, it's only productive for the kingdom of heaven when the Holy Spirit is in it. Otherwise, you're just cultivating a gift, which is great, and it can give you fame in the world. But I, I believe our ultimate goal is to get, is to glorify God and his kingdom on earth. And in order to do that, you need the Holy Spirit. So his gifting, like I said, was only able to be effective with the Holy Spirit. So I want us to turn to... Ecclesiastics 3, 7. Okay, so whilst we're waiting on that, um, for those of us who know the story of Samson very well, we know that um, he knew his, the secret of his gift. He knew the secret of how God was using him, but no one else did. It was a secret and revelation that he got from God and it was for him to keep. Sometimes we have something that God has given to us and before time we can now speak it out to the wrong people or maybe at the wrong time. So they don't have Ecclesiastes 3, 7, but it says there's a time to speak and a time to be silent. When we go on to um, Judges and we see Samson, we see one thing that he did was Delilah, Delilah was pestering him so much she was going, it says that she was talking him to death. She kept pestering him and pestering him to find out the secret of his gift. The Philistines did not know the secret of his gift. They did not know how he was able to defeat them. And they were wondering, how is it? How is it? So in that wondering, as they were wondering, how is it that he defeats them? Delilah was now used and used to speak to him unto death so that he was able to reveal his gift. And after his gift was revealed, and it was not just the gift, it was the revelation behind the gift. It was the revelation of how God was using him. Um, God will use us in diverse ways, but there are things that God reveals to you as a personal thing for you to know, as something you should work on, that does not need to be said out to the masses. It's not for you being secretive or you being someone that thinks um, or being suspicious. It is because that revelation is for you alone. Nobody had to know how God was using Samson. And that's why it was a fight between Samson and Delilah before he actually let go of that secret. It was something that it took, it took from him. He had to keep saying no, no. And, he, and until the point where he gave it, and it's as if he knew when he gave that information that he had lost something because there was a revelation behind it that no one else should know. And at times for us, there's a revelation that God has given unto you. And maybe you're thinking, oh, let me tell Sister A, Brother B. And God is saying, wait, hold on. Speak to me first and let, let us talk about this thing before we go out to tell the world about it. Because as soon as she found out the secret of his gift, it's not that she went and said, oh, praise the Lord, this is his gift. No, he went. she went to the very people trying to destroy him. It now became the information that now caused him to lose his hair and his eyes. And for those of us that don't know, Samson's hair was... I remember growing up and people would say Samson's hair was his strength. But as I got older and started to look at it for myself, Samson's hair was not his strength. His strength was from the Holy Spirit. The God used his hair and the fact that he had not been defiled and um, um, cut off as a symbol, as God does, as a symbol of his presence. And once that was cut off, 
is as if he found himself now defiled and found himself like every other person. But that was the very thing that made him set apart. So like I said, the revelation behind your gift is not something that you need to go and tell everybody and even other information. It is key that we know whom we speak to and when we speak. And then the last thing is sacrifice. So as heroes, we're going to find ourselves in positions where we have to sacrifice. It is key that we know that that is what God is calling us to do. Because to accomplish something is a sacrifice of time. It's a sacrifice maybe of money. It's a sacrifice of energy. And as children of God, our job is to sacrifice. We can see from our Lord Jesus how he sacrificed and we, we benefited from it. And even though we cannot call him a hero because he's more than a hero, our job is to emulate him in any way possible. So as heroes, we will find ourselves having to sacrifice. And it's contrary to how the world sees it. Because the world sees it as, I take and I keep taking and I keep taking. And if we go to Matthew 16, 24, um, it says... And I love this one. It says, Jesus said to the disciples, if any of you wants to be a follower, you must give your own way. Take up your cross and follow me. If you try and hang on to your life, you will lose it. But if you give up your life for my sake, you will save it. And what do you benefit if you gain the whole world and lose your own soul? Is anything worth more than your soul? So really and truly, when you follow Christ and you become in the stead of you saying you want to be a hero, you will find yourself having to give. You'll find yourself having to bear things. You'll find yourself doing things that are contrary to what the world says. And it is a sacrifice. But the Bible says that at the end of it, what we're going to get is glory. It's going to be something where it's contrary to the world. It's contrary to the world to be someone who sacrifices their time as the saying is time is money to help others but what we know from the scripture is in that sacrifice as being a follower of christ there is a benefit for it and as a hero that's what we should do now in samson's case at the end of it he ended up losing his life that's not our case in jesus name but he ended up making that sacrifice and it was a sacrifice because he knew that he had to finish the assignment. It's as if everything came back to him and he was now long, no longer in, a, in the midst of how things are in the world. And he realized, okay, I need to go and do, finish my assignment. And he made a sacrifice, which actually was of benefit to the Israelites. So in effect, he's an example of another person that may have to make a sacrifice. May not be in the way that I pray for all of us that it will not be that way in Jesus' name. But we see in that, that he was ready to do what he needed to do in order to finish the assignment. So the next bit of, this is overcoming the fall with Samson, overcoming the fall. The first thing is to accept your identity. Like I said, acceptance of the identity is different from knowing your identity. And the Bible lets us know who we are and who we should be walking, walking in the same light as Jesus Christ. If we go to Matthew 5, 14 to 16. You are the light of the world, like a city set on a hilltop that cannot be hidden. No one's light, no one's light a lamp and puts it under a basket. Instead, a lamp is a place on a stand where it goes it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your good deeds shine out to all, for all to see so everyone will praise the Heavenly Father. That is our assignment. That's our identity. We're children of God. This is what God has said that we should do. We should be light and example. And it also means in that our actions and everything we do is something that God wants us to show as an example. We are light. Samson, if anybody was watching Samson as he was marrying these, um, marrying these women, um, drinking alcohol, it would not have been a good light as to who he was. And that's the same way that God is saying for us. We know that we are Christians. We know we have an identity. And now we are, are supposed to be a light. We're supposed to go around, around and people see us and be like, I can see she's a light. I can see she's affecting change. That is what God has given to us as a mandate. 
even if you say you don't know how to do it, at least you know from this that you're supposed to do it. It is mandatory for us to do that, to be a light, because it is us showing forth the glory of God. The second thing is to acknowledge weakness and confess. Samson did that at the end of his, um, at the end of his time in Judges. He realized his mistake, and he realized that he had allowed the enemy within and also the enemies outside to now take him into a position where he was now in a place where they chained him up, taking out his eyes and taking off his hair. And in that time, he had realized, I cannot do this by myself. Maybe I was taking for granted the fact that I was strong enough to use a donkey's jawbone to defeat my enemies. But now I'm in a situation I have to surrender. I'm in a situation where I know I've done wrong. I need to come back. And I know there's many a times we find ourselves in that situation, but God is saying, if there is a situation like that, it is time for us to go and say, I know I have a weakness, God, I come before you and I ask that you help me. Because as soon as Samson did that, he was able to defeat the Philistines that were there. Which means as soon as I acknowledge my weakness and confess, God is able to use me in an effective way. Not just, it's one thing to be used, but it's one thing to be used and be effective. The Bible says to be a vessel of honor, to also be used and be a gain to the kingdom of God. And that's what we all want to do. So in order to overcome the fall, that Sam, what Samson did was confess his weakness and go before God and say, use me once again. And the, the Bible says he was used. Now, the last thing before I close is to conquer your enemies. And this is in regards to the enemy within, because the enemy within is something that will come up. You might conquer one and then something else will come up, conquer, um, come up again. And one thing I've realized is, is that once we know our identity and we get the first thing right, even as the enemy within comes, we'll be able to stand against whatever is a contention, whether it's pride and say, look, pride, you can't be in me. I'm a child of God. Look, love of money, it's not right for you to be within me because I'm a child of God. And the um, scripture that I want us to turn to is 2 Timothy 1.7. It says, For God has not given us a spirit of fear and timidity, but power, love, and self-discipline. And the reason why I love the scripture is because it says it's given us power. Sometimes we use the scripture to just say that we don't have the spirit of fear. But the Bible is saying, but of power, which means we can command things that are in our lives that we know are wrong to stop. We have the ability if we walk in that ability and say, look, I'm not going to do this anymore. You cannot control me anymore. God has given us the power to overcome that thing. And it also says of self-discipline. That's all been given to us. But it is in us, it's for us to activate that power and say, I'm going to use the power to stop this. I'm going to use the power to overcome this. So God has given it to us already, but it's for us to access. It's for us to go and take hold of that power. And I pray that God will help us to actualize that in Jesus' name. And the last thing I want to tell you before I go is what kind of hero are you? Samson was a war hero, but what kind of hero are you? When we're doing this series and this academy, it's all for the purpose for us to figure out where we're supposed to be placed, where we are, for us to find out more about ourselves. In the story of Samson, we can see he was a war hero who had the lust for women. But we also see that at the end of it, he was able to gain humility. Some of us were thinking, okay, where do I fall in this? Well, the, well, I believe at this time and in this series, our whole point is to find out, okay, I am a hero, I can be a hero, but how does God want me to implement my hero ship? How does God want me to be effective in that? And I pray even as you've heard this and even as you've heard the previous series and the upcoming series that will be coming, that God will bless you and that you receive all the information that you need to make that decision to be a hero. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Thank you for watching our Ignite Sermon. Be sure to share this video with friends and family. Check us out on our social media for more information about our church. Be blessed.